Praise to Jesus Christ, now and forever. This is Timothy Flanders at the Meaning of Catholic. You have joined the Guild family stream, and we're doing this on Telegram, and hopefully this goes well. Uh, still learning this system a little bit, but um, I, I'm glad we can do this from time to time as well. We did this um, a couple weeks ago when we were talking about Father Pavone on the Guild stream, and then we also did it with Terror of Demons, um, with Kennedy Hall. Um, so what we'll, so what we'll do is as we've done before, we'll have a sort of a public portion. The beginning of this will be public. So we'll release this on YouTube and then the rest for the, for the guild, y'all will have this whole thing available to you. So I wanted to thank everybody for being a part of the guild. Thank you for your support of this apostolate meaning of Catholic, which supports the Flanders family, it supports our authors and our volunteers and helps this whole thing keep going. So I appreciate your support. Uh, so I will have a few comments in here, and then we'll have y'all's live comments, which you can uh, give, and we can discuss whatever you'd like to on the Guild family stream. So here's what's going to be going on today. We're going to here, – here's our topics. Um, we'll talk about the Lutheran Mass in which I was raised uh, and all of these different things coming together, the healing of the leper, Orlando Gibbons, Western Rite Orthodoxy, and St. Timothy Day. And all of this is going to be uh, an occasion for me to comment on Vatican II's Unitatis Redintegratio, uh, because I think that this experience actually illustrates this doctrine, which is contained in that document in Vatican II. And then we'll talk about some of our guild family needs. Um, there's an interesting clarification, which we will discuss about the SSPX and the new mass. Uh, we discussed this before regarding their prayer book, which has an examination of conscience regarding the new mass. We'll talk about that in a minute. There's an interesting clarification. And then there's two quotes that people shared in the guild chat that I wanted to comment on and discuss as well, which were great. And then we'll get your comments. So um, the first part of this is the Lutheran mass in which I grew up. Um, it's not really a mass. It's a, it's a Lutheran Lord's Supper, but the Lutherans to their credit, did retain a great deal of the Roman rite in their liturgies. And I grew up with a, so a, a weekly Lord's Supper, a weekly um, uh, communion service for Lutherans. Um, Lutherans technically do believe in a, in a doctrine of the real presence, in fact. Uh, it's not the Orthodox doctrine, but it is at least something. Um, but uh, one of the things about this mass that I grew up in was that it was rather high liturgically uh, relative to other Protestants. And it included uh, a ch some forms of the Roman rite that were chanted. Notably, for this story, the Sursum Corda chanted in English. So the, uh, the Lord be with you and all that. Um, that was something that I heard every Sunday growing up in the Lutheran mass. Um, and that was something that always, uh, struck me in my, uh, formation, liturgical formation, uh, Protestant though it was, uh, was the chanting. There was chanting. And, uh, this is just elements of the Roman rite retained by the Lutherans. Okay. So fast forward to, uh, my college searching. In my college searching, I uh, grew, by the grace of God, I grew to understand the enormity of uh, my own sin and the, the sin that I had committed, uh, which had corrupted the world. Um, in college, you are often searching for answers to the world's problems. And uh, like many, I was searching for answers to the church's problems. And this was something that I was seeking out and uh, fig trying to figure out. Um, and ultimately, I came to realize how much I'm the problem, really, it is, uh, is a very important part of my own conversion story is realizing that I'm the problem. Um, that's kind of the first step, I think, towards a true progress of overcoming church issues is recognizing that I'm the problem. Um, and uh, the story of the healing of the leper um, was 
a moment of the Gospels that always struck me in my own personal spiritual life. This, uh, when our Lord <clears throat> encounters the leper and the leper falls down on his knees and he says, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And this was something that really struck me because I sort of imagined myself as the leper. I imagined myself in my own sin as being unclean and saying to the Lord Jesus, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And we know that what happens, our Lord, the text says that our Lord was moved to compassion. And then he reaches out his hand, he stretches out his hand and touches the leper, which is this awesome moment because we know from the Mosaic law that touching a leper would make you unclean itself. But the opposite happens to our, with our Lord is that our Lord, in, except in fact, makes the leper clean. He doesn't become himself unclean, but he actually make, does the opposite. And so Jesus touches him. And it was this, this uh, powerful encounter with Jesus that always struck me as it was sort of an occasion of my prayer, an occasion of my spiritual life as a Protestant, um, struggling through the various shadows of Catholic truth that are mixed everywhere. And this is where we find this fantastic rendition uh, Orla of Orlando Gibson, Gibbons, which is um, entitled Almighty and Everlasting God. And in this this uh, polyphony piece by Orlando Gibbons, who is, so he's, um, it, it's a, it's a sacred music polyphony piece in English by Orlando Gibbons. It's called Almighty and Everlasting God. And in this, it says, Almighty and Everlasting God, stretch forth thy right hand in, in our infirmities. Stretch forth thy right hand to help and defend us. And so there's this parallel with the story of the leper that always struck me. And there's this polyphony piece that struck me. And in the context of me growing up with the Lutheran pieces of the Roman rite. Okay. So all of this kind of comes to a head with the Western rite Orthodox. Uh, as I was at the time later in college, I was searching for uh, the truth of the Catholic faith without knowing it. And I, I ended up in Eastern Orthodoxy, but I found my way to what's called Western Rite Orthodoxy. This is something that is a parallel to Eastern Catholicism. And it is the, the in fact, the, the Western Rite in communion with Eastern Orthodoxy. So it's basically the, the, the Tridentine Mass in English. And it is, um, so it's, it's very unique. Uh, there's only a handful of parishes out there that do this in the Eastern Orthodox Church, mostly in the Antiochian Orthodox Church. Um, but this was something that I was also on a journey not only to discover the Catholic faith, to sever the truth, but to reconcile in my own ethnic identity to my own Western fathers. And Western Rite Orthodoxy seemed to seemed to present to me something which seemed to reconcile that at the time. Uh, and all of this came to a head on St. Timothy's Day a number of years ago. This would have been probably 2009, I think, uh, when I was in college. So it was on, on St. Timothy Day, January 24th, and something happened which brought all this stuff together. So let me see where we're at here. So we'll get the rest of the story on the guild stream. We're going to close out the public portion of this at nine. Let's see, nine forty-five. So if you want the full story and further discussion you can become a guild member, patreon.com slash meaning of Catholic.